In today's video, we're going to talk about our cable routing tool that allows you to perform a cable length, voltage drop, and trench fill calculations from a layout drawing of the physical design. In the drawing that uh, I have open, you can see we have a layout for a typical yard including trenches, conduits, and a control house. The magenta shaded pieces that you see in here are work points that contain special codes that tell our software how to route the cable through the layout and we'll place a couple of those into our symbol now so you can see how that's going to work and of course documentation and all the symbol libraries are included with the software. I'll start up here with the insert work point tool and place our first point. This is going to be defining the location of XF41. So we'll place in location, that's the code that tells that. This is going to be XF41, comma, and where that is going to run from, from this device into a conduit, C002.A. Now these tools in here, the, the coding for the C002 can be anything you want, but A and B is, the dot A and the dot B are important to define the start and end point of the conduits. So in this example, we're starting from location XF41. Any wiring or cables that are have that as its location value will then run into C002.A. Now that tells it where to start, our next two work points we're going to add in, oh, by the way, notice it's just putting the point in. We also have a tool here that allows you to toggle the attribute mode so you can see the work point information on in here. So again, that was underneath our, in our new menu. You can see toggle at mode. So rather than trying to remember how to turn it on and off, we have the tool available for you right away, and it just turns it on and off. Now I'm going to put in my second work point. This is going to define the conduit run into the trench itself. So from here, we're going to just put in that the C path here, right, is going to go to someplace else. So what is the C path? As we just entered, it's going to be 002.A. And we have that one complete. So you can see the location starts from here, goes into C002.A, and now that's where the conduit starts from. Now we're going to move over to the trench. So a conduit's going to run from this device over into the trench and I'll put in our third work point. Now again this can work. We're doing it from a 2D drawing. You could also do it from a 3D drawing as well. Now for this last one that we're going to put in today we have to put in the other half of that conduit. So we have to put in our code first. Path C0 002.b, comma, and then we have to tell it the trench that's a part of. And in our case, it's TR3.a and TR3.b. So that defines the entire trench piece that's going on in, inside of here. And of course, we have components that say where the trench starts from, where it ends, routing paths that go all the way back through to here. Now notice you don't, at this point, you don't have to know where the cables are running. You're simply defining the physical layout via work points. And the, this could also be done in the inventor physical drawing and we could create the uh, information we need from there. So once the points are in, the next step is to extract or read that work point information. And again, this could happen in Inventor. Same tools are available there. And you can see down here at the bottom, we have created a work points text file. So that's all created for us. Now we can move to our schematic, and this is where the magic really starts to happen. You'll notice in this schematic, I have multiple cables that are defined in here. And I'll just take a look at one of these, cable 156 edit that component, you'll see here's the cable. The location for where it starts from is on this device right here. So you can see the location code is XF41. The component tag is D, pin 03. Okay, so, and there's multiple cables and they all work that same kind of way. And then it ends up in junction boxes and continues on from the other areas. So now we'll go to our cable schedule tool. This is basically starting out from the cable from to report, but we simplified some of the processes so you don't have to go through all of that data and information. So when I start, click the OK button here, you can see it was just a couple of quick steps compared to 
going through all of the project selections, drawing selections, if you're going through the standard cable from to report. Once that's done, you'll see here's our cable from to report. That's what it starts out as, cable 156, 57, and 58. Here's the parent and the children's and the location code. Again, that's the really important part, where it starts from, where it all ends up. Here's the next important part. I think this information is very cool too, right? Where does this wire start from? The location component pin. Where does it end? Location component pin. Great details. But now it gets even better. We're going to go to our user post tool. You can see we have a variety of options. I'm going to keep it kind of simple today for uh, the, the needs, you know, for the time constraints. We can add a calculated length. So in case you're working with a 2D drawing, you want to add a little extra uh, cables to the calculation, we can add 10%. Here's our amp draw at 20 amps. What's going to happen with that? And we'll even run a duct schedule that shows you the pieces that are going in each conduit. So I'm going to pick OK here. This is a user post that ships with our software. And here is the report for the conduit run. You can see that's where it's starting from. So in conduit 2, remember we placed those in. Here is the from XF to trench 3 for these two cables that are being run. Shows you all of that different information that you can uh, create inside of here. Also, if I close from here, it just takes us back to our normal cable from to report. And if I click on this wide button, you'll now see we have all of that information. Let's again look at cable 50, 156. Starts at XF41, goes to junction box 2 that's in the house. Here's the route of that cable. Starts at the location, to the conduit, to trench 3, trench 1, and then to that junction box. Here is the cable length right 167 feet here is the ten, uh, that length plus the 10 percent also if we look over here we have the voltage drop at 20 amps 368 feet of that 8c cable that's the one that we placed in and here is the information that that's going with it okay so all of that information is available to you and it all starts from creating work points and defining those work point locations. And then our algorithms find the shortest distance of the path from where it starts from either the location or the tag. Awesome information there. It can use either the location code or the tag itself, then into the conduits to run. And in this case, it runs from here down over to these points and then off. And you'll be able to see that JB3 was this location in the control house. You can see location JB3 enters into trench one. And by the way, the other thing that's happening, happening with this calculation is this is always an orthogonal um, calculation. It goes straight up and then over to determine its length, it does not take the shortest distance route. So that's planned because we know that that's how conduits and trenchers are normally run and operated. So there's our great new tool, cable routing, available in uh, most recent versions of the software. If you have any questions, please contact us at spatialbiz.com.